Hi there. So today what we're going to do is we're just going to go over a quick overview of the G-Develop platform and interface. Now this will also stand as an introduction to most game engines. The layout will be similar and a lot of the components will be very like in the way that they function or what their purpose is. Even though G-Develop is primarily a two-dimensional platform, the aspects and components of it are going to be very similar amongst all platforms and development um, tools. So we're going to switch over here to show you the screen up top here and I'm going to tell you what some of these things are. So um, mind with me, I just changed my camera set up a little bit here and I'll be looking upwards at my secondary screen. It is uh, OBS Studios recording on the bottom screen and I've got the development software on the top screen. I'm just playing around with reorganizing better for this game development session than I was using for my Linux stuff. So you keep that in mind and I may change the format slightly from um, podcast to podcast here. So if, as you can see up here, we have GDevelop open and it is um, your project panel on this side. And over here, you've got a bunch of examples and things that come with it. This is the default when you open it. Uh, so you can open. They have a ton of different tutorials that you can actually open here. Platformer, uh, a plain jumpy one. I, I don't know what half of these are. I've only opened like two or three of these. Uh, space, classic space shooter like uh, on the, Ninten the old Nintendo Game Boys. Um, Endless Runner, basically a guy that keeps running around shooting. Um, then a bunch of tutorials so i do recommend you work through some of these tutorials and work through some of these games and look at how they were made and um yeah so but we're not going to go into that so what we're going to do here is show you this basic layout up top so we can open the project manager close a project you can also get to the project manager over here and this is primarily how you do it uh, up in the top left then you have a debug mode, you have a preview mode, and then you have a publish mode. So we're gonna go to the project manager, and we're gonna open a new game. We don't have a game in here, so file, create new project, create new project. I can, you can choose in this mode, there's all sorts of examples to choose from these down. I'm just going to scroll to the bottom so you can see the variety. Feel free to look at it on your own time, but there's a ton, a ton of um, examples and starters. Still scrolling, almost at the end now. There we go, now we're at the end. So you can see there's quite a lot. Now I'm not gonna do any of these. There's also the tutorials you can open and the game showcases that I showed you in the main project when you first open it. I'm coming down here, the bottom right, create a blank project. What are we gonna call it? They come up, I'm not sure why they do this, but they give you default names, it just must be random. So, we're, but we're gonna call this one if I can type properly, sorry. Learning underscore G D V L up. Create project. So now we have a blank project window. So what you're going to notice now is that you have this side on the left, this side on the right, and the screen in the middle. Now most editors will have this type of an interface or something similar to it. Um, and what it is, is it's a very comfortable layout that people have learned to use with a lot of tools. The beginnings, I believe, was the Photoshop uh, and the Adobe products. They would have over here your tools to work with, the project you're working with, and then whatever the subset of tools or your layers 
and your your color palettes and modifiers over on this side here. So it's become a very very common layout, the three three pane layout, and um, G develops no different. They've decided to to use it as well. So up top again, you've still got your project window. You've got all your file view windows help. Your all your windows toolbars. Your debug, your preview, and your publish are still here as they were before you opened the project. But now you have these extra buttons here. So this opens pro object editor. So if we have an object over here, we can edit that object. This opens object group editor. You can create groups of objects. Um, where that would come in handy is, um, say you've got three or four different um, cars and you want to group them together and use them multiple times in a level. Um, maybe you've got a car dealership or something, I don't know. Well, you could group objects together as, and then just place them down as groups of objects. So, But you can also edit the layout of those and create different groups and rename and change. Uh, we're not going to go over that in this, this, these early tutorials. We'll probably cover it later on. Um, this opens the properties panel, so any, any object or any item, you can check the properties out on it. Um, open the list of instances so when you have an object and you bring it on board you can you, and then you bring it on board again that's another instance of it um, you could do this for walls vehicles monsters whatever but this will give you an itemized instance list and then you can go to each instance and work with them individually like perhaps you want to change some variables you've assigned to one instance or perhaps you want to make one instance green rather than blue or so there's a lot of different things you can do with uh, by working on the individual instances. Layers, you can use layers just like in Photoshop. Um, because it's a 2 day application, you are not working in a true 3D space. However, you do have a Z plane and you do have layers. And between those, you can do a lot of 3D-ish representation. Um, Next over here, I believe this is just undo, redo, forward, back, undo, redo. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. I've never used it. Grid layout. So this toggles on and off the edit grid. So I'm going to show the grid. And now you can edit your grid properties. And this is where we're going to actually start. But um, change the editor zoom and open settings. So that's project settings. So what we're going to do first is we want to look at the settings scene properties window title scene background color gray so there's not a whole lot of things in here and we don't have any variables set up yet but just so you're familiar with that i'm going to set up my grid now so we're generally when working in 2d using a grid is a really good idea because what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to kind of determine the base size of your sprites or your game elements. And those should be relatively uniform and have a relatively uniform offset in order to line up on the screen. So what we're doing is I've left, I'm going to leave my alpha alone. I'm going to leave my line color alone. I'm not worried about that. Um, you can change those if you know blue doesn't particularly work for you or if you're working on a blue background and you want your grid to show up better um, then you could change change that I'm not worried about it now we might we may adjust it later as we work with things we're just going to work with a few examples in the next um, lesson uh, just off of our hip so we may very well change that um, cell width and pixels so this is how big your sprites or icons or uh, elements are going to be 32 by 32 is default, but I believe what we're going to do is we're actually going to work with a 64 by 64. So I'm going to change that right now. And I'm going to leave my X offset and my Y offsets alone. I am not building an isometric game, uh, although you do have the ability to do so. A good example of an, of an isometric game would be in the early days like Zaxxon, although it was still just 2D or uh, let's see the original Diablo series um, some of the uh, some of the mid-generation Mario games they would have also been is um, isometric based so anything like that um, but we're not working with that so we're just gonna hit apply because we want to work with 64 by 64 so now we've got our grid layout 
And what we're going to do is we are going to rename our title here. Untitled scene and scene events. So project manager, untitled scene, three dots, rename, and it went away on me. Sorry, my mouse is a bit sensitive right now. There we go. Rename it. And we are going to call this first scene, we're just going to call it Bounce. There we go. So now we've created a scene. We've called it Bounce. We're turning our grid on. And do you see here that we've now created this bounce and we now have this bounce events and we have this screen. Now you see this little blue dot here, this little blue dot here in your center and you see this black line. So if I scroll out using the mouse wheel, that black line is my representation of my screen size and my aspect ratio. These blue dots are my position in it. So if I'm working on something and I'm zooming in here and I'm like, oh, I need to go up. I can grab this little blue line and I can travel up and there, now I'm at the top. I can travel down, now I'm at the bottom. Well, I want to travel to the edge of this one, just to the outside border, there it is. Travel back the other direction. I think I went outside the border. Yeah, I did. I went too fast. There's the other boy. So here we are. I'm just going to scroll up a bit here and try and center on this. So you'll get used to those a little bit. So now what I want to do is I want to jump into actually doing some editing here. So I'm just going to center this a bit better. Now we want to create our first object. However, what we don't want to do is get too carried away with creating objects and things before we set up our first event. So what I want to do is add one object and I am going to call that a tiled sprite. So object name, new tiled sprite, we're just going to call this border. Because all I want to do is make a border around the outside of my window. I'll call it border 1. And default pixels 60. Oh, type there, 64 by 64. And we're going to create a new image, edit with Piscal. So Piscal is a built-in tool that allows you to build your own 2D pixel art sprites. And we're going to open that. It's opened it lower down, so I have to drag it up. And I'm just trying to make it fit because I'm working on an actual television set for my second monitor here. However, you see here we're at 32 by 32. We're going to change that to 64 by 64. And we're going to make our defaults 64. Oh. Perfect. We're 64 by 64. We are good to go. So now all I want to do, because this is going to be a border and it's going to be a tiled border, is I'm simply going to choose a color from my background. Let's go, let's just go with a gold. And then we're going to choose this fill bucket. And we're simply going to fill it in. Now I'm going to save that. And we're good to go. Apply. 
So I've now created my first sprite and it's a border 64 by 64. I think I need to set up my grid again because when I renamed my area, I think I changed it. Sorry, I didn't click right over here. That's better. Now I've got my 64 by 64. So now I'm pretty much ready to do my layout. It doesn't line up exactly to the edge or anything, but that's fine. Now what we need to do is that image that we brought in, border one, it doesn't really have a function as of yet. So we need to assign a behavior to it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here. So we just clicked on our three buttons. Now we're gonna go down and we're gonna assign a behavior. There are built-in behaviors, quite a few of them to get you up and running. And you can create your own behaviors and write your own code as well. However, what we're gonna do is we are going to add a behavior, just a pre-canned behavior. So I don't know how this, my mouse is extra sensitive. I didn't add that, want to add that behavior. There we go. Um, what I do want to do is add this platform behavior. And what this does is allows this to be a platform for a character to run into. And what that does is set up basic collision checking. So now you just drag it in. And because it is a, um, because I chose it to be a tiled sprite, now what I can do with it is I can simply hold control down and extend it. Then I can take it. really does want to open on me and my mouse every time. Arr. Do not know why that behavior is happening. However, there we go. Got my border there. Now I need a side border. Click off of it. This hold to click is irritating me. All right, there we have our border drawn out. Now we're simply going to hit save. Now we want to set up our first events. So we go over here to the event window. So now what events are, are basically coding or scripting extra behaviors you assign, almost like a visual scripting language. And well, it is a visual scripting language. So they have these little scriptlets that are pre-built to do certain things. And through your interaction, you can assign behaviors uh, to objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our first one. Add event. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover the mouse over this blue, right click on it, and I'm going to go add other. And I want to go over here to a comment because I really like documenting everything I do. This is going to be center window and exit when escape key is pressed. So I've just added an explanation as to what I'm going to do here. So this first action, I'm going to type in scene and what it's going to do is give me a list of different scene related 
things I can do. So one of those is at the beginning of the scene. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to hit OK. So now I've got this condition at the beginning of the scene. But it's not doing anything yet. It's just sitting here. So what we're going to do is go add an action. So at the beginning of the scene, we want to center Window screen, center, center position. I want to center the screen position. But maybe other actions. Center. There we go. Center the game window on the screen. That's the one that I want. Okay. So you just saw there, I looked at the condition. I looked for an action. I didn't find it. So I exited out and I looked for it under a different category. So that is one thing that's a little tricky in GDevelop is that sometimes you've got to hunt around for where the action is. If you stop and think about it, you can usually think, okay, that's not an action to do with an object. That's an action to do with um, some other device or mechanism. So then you'd think to look under other, other actions. However, you don't always think of it. So just be aware that if you're looking for something and you can't find it, try looking under the other actions category because quite often you will find it there. So at the beginning of the scene, center the game window. And now I don't want to do it any time in the game. I want to, or and just at the beginning. I want to do it at any point in time, and that's press the second part when the escape key is pressed exit. Oh, mosquito just flew in my ear. Sorry about that. So I'm going to add another condition, not in the same beginning of the scene because I don't want it to happen there, but in this next event, add a condition and key is pressed. So not you have released pressed um, press text expression you have all those but no we want key is pressed and we just want to go escape we're going to scroll all the way down here till we find it i'll just scroll past it there it is the escape key is pressed okay now what we want to do is add an action to that. Quit the game. Perfect. Okay. So now we want to just save that. And now we just want to test that those two things work. Preview the game. And it's brought it down below, so I just got to drag it back up. So it did center it. However, it centered it on my other monitor, so you couldn't see it. You can see there's our yellow border, and if I hit the escape key, it quits the game. So everything we, we just laid out works. The only thing we've noticed is that our border, because of this black border how it is and laid out with the grid, it wasn't exactly perfect. So what we're going to do is, oh, this is really frustrating. I'm just going to drag this bigger to there. Perfect. And then this one, I'm going to drag, drag it in a bit again. Just make it a little bit wider. There we go. And then, no, yes. Now you can use the uh, arrow keys on your keyboard to just slightly move things as well. So what I'm going to do is, because I'm not going to snap to grid, I want this thickness about the same as the other things. So I'm just going to bring it back a little bit there. And I'm going to do the same for this one. It doesn't matter if it's off screen. And now we're just going to preview that again and make sure it's lined up better this time. All right. 
and there we see that's better. It's not like, exactly perfect, but the person could play around with that and get it perfect. Exit that off. Now we're pretty much ready where we want to be. And I'm going to save that. Now the next step is to have some interaction. You know, games are fairly useless if they don't do anything and they're just a big yellow box, correct? I'll sip my tea there. So you know, what we're going to do now is we're going to create another object. This one is going to be a sprite. And we're going to again add an animation. Hit it with Pixar. Pixel, sorry. And it's 64 by 64 again. But what we want to do here is we want to create a player uh, paddle. Actually, we're just going to grab a different color here. We're going to grab a, we're, we're going to make it a We'll go with a brown color. Save. And we're just going to call this one Player 1. Apply. And now we're going to add a behavior to it. Edit behaviors. Add a behavior. I don't want this drag. I won't keep doing that on me. My cat is playing on my chair. Go away, kitty kitty. All right. Add a behavior. And what we want is we want to make this move back and forth. But we don't want to add gravity to it, so we're going to give it a top-down view. See, if we choose platformer, you can move back and forth. You have the option to also jump and crouch. However, um, there's gravity applied, and we don't want gravity applied. So we're going to add top-down movement. But what we're going to do is not allow diagonals not rotate the object and hit apply and now what we're going to do is drag that in place it right there and we're going to make it Three vibe. So now what we're going to do is preview that. Drag this up. No, not full screen. Uh, sorry, I apologize. Keeps wanting the full. Keeps wanting the Windows full screen, and I don't want a Windows full screen. Just lost it somewhere. I don't know where. There it is. All right. I am having a heck of a time getting this up onto the next screen. However, the motion is working. I'm going to escape out of it again. Preview. Well, this is frustrating. Since I've added the motion to it, I can't seem to I can't seem to bring it up to the other monitor. It wants to stay centered on the bottom monitor, and if I try to bring it up, it does some funkiness. So I can't actually show you that. But 
what is happening is when I hit the arrow keys, this moves side to side, and it also moves up and down. So we don't want it to move up and down, obviously. We wanted to make it a paddle that swings back and forth. So what we are going to do is go into events, and now we're going to add a new event, and we're going to choose player one, and we are going to do Movement, offset, angle, speed, I'll just make it a little bit shiny. Speed on Y axis. Is equal to zero. Okay. Now I'm just going to quickly preview that again. That didn't do it. So that did not do anything. Oh, because that was my condition. So delete. So I, I did that totally wrong. I said if that was basically setting a condition if it was set to zero. So we're going to go player one uh, is moving. Okay, now, so if player one is moving, set action, player one, um, and what we want to do is, nothing there. Change the acceleration of the object. Operator. We don't want to change it. Speed of the y axis. Choose an operator is set to value zero. Okay. Now let's see if that fixed it. Yes, that fixed it. All right. So there's also another way to do that. I mean, we'd have to hunt to find it. But in the actions, sorry, the mosquitoes are biting me. Um, the actions are available for locking movement on the y-axis or locking movement on the x-axis, period. Um, so these both accomplish the same thing. However, um, the other one's a little harder to find, and just for, for time, I wanted to show this. So that is essentially it, except now what we want to do is we want to make sure that this bounces off this. So what we need to do is we need to add a behavior project. So we come over to our project window, and... We want to go to functions and behaviors, and I want to search for a function behavior, and I'm going to search for bounce. Uh, didn't find it there. Did I scroll past it? There it is. I'm going to install it. Perfect. And then I'm going to close this. So now what I want to do is I go up here to border, behaviors, add a behavior, bounce. Perfect. And then I also want to add that to my player one.
So with the bounce behavior, you need to add it. It doesn't automatically work. This won't automatically bounce off of that. And I know you can't see my screen, but I'm just going to prove it out here. No, didn't work. So I just wanted to, to proof of concept that just to make sure that I wasn't telling a fib. Um, but now we come into the events again. And now we set up a new event, add an event, add a condition, player one, and now we're searching for collision. So we want simple collision. And we want to go test the collision between two objects and their collision. So we want to choose what's the name of the object? Why is it not letting me choose my object? Uh, let me just do that again. Sorry. Player one is moving. Change the speed from zero. Yeah, okay. Add player one. And then I want to go collision object. Okay. Order one. Okay. So player one is in collision with border one. Add action. Other action. Bounce. And we want to go just bounce off another object. We don't want to use a specified angle. Now in theory, oh, no, I want that the other way around. Uh, damn, cancel. I want to go. This double click is irritating me. Okay. Clear one off. Order one. So, because we don't want to bounce the wall, make the walls move, we want to make sure that the player moves. So, now I'm just going to quickly preview that. Can I get it? Just trying to get it up on that screen to show you. This is frustrating. Well, it did bounce off. The collision worked. It stopped. However, I can't actually show that to you on the screen like I'd like to. So for the next video, I'm going to have to make a few changes to my layout because obviously the changes I made aren't working if I can't actually show you the demonstration of the behavior that's happening. Uh, that being said, that shouldn't be a big deal to fix. I'm going to just simply set up another screen capture and reverse my screens in OBS Studio. So I'll see you in the next video. So you've seen how to set up a basic a basic player control and a border for it. Oh, there is one more thing, sorry. So what we do want to do is we want to set up a ball. So I'm going to add a new object. I'm going to add a sprite, add an animation, hit it with Pisco. Keep doing the same thing. This is very frustrating. Oh, I might be able to do that. Okay, 
So, so what we're going to do though is we're going to make a circle. there and we're going to choose a nice red we're going to fill that and then we're going to choose a little bit of a, a pinky white and we're just going to do a couple dots here just so that we've got a little bit of a Obviously, you can do better art than this. However, just want to get that done quickly to show you. Perfect. Good enough. Just a little bouncy, a little. Apply. All right. And now what we do need to do is the next thing is we need to go in and we need to edit points and I need to bring my center point and my collision point to the middle. So what these two points are is one is where it originates and that's how it'll line up to different objects and that's mostly used for say tiling, um, terrain or adding construction pieces that go together like for a tower or buildings and you want to make sure that those points line up perfectly but for a ball, you're going to want the insertion point or the connection point right in the middle. So we're going to close that. But then we're also going to edit what's called collision masks. So now you can edit this on just about anything. However, if you see here, it's set up in the shape of a square. You can't really change that. But what you can do is use custom collision mask. And you can actually add extra vertexes. Not convex, it shows you otherwise, that's fine. Perfect. Uh huh. That's fine. So now I'm going to move my collision mask in. I thought that was going to add extra. There. So this one goes here. This one goes here. Uh, where's my other one? Here we are. Oh, there. So it added them to the top corner is what it did. Somehow. Huh. You know what? I'm going to delete those too. We'll just keep it simple. And we're going to allow a little bit of overlap here. So if I got, I did something wrong with my vertex there. I've done it before and it's usually fine. Um, I think what it is was I started from the right corner and they added to the left and I should have dragged them out first. However, uh, I'm not going to mess around with it for time. But you can add extras and so you can make it much closer. The more you add, the more you make it like a um, circle. So if I add another one right now, I can bring that one in here. If I add another one right now, bring that one there. And then that way I can shift these around a bit better.
There we go. A little, little bit of coverage, a little more like a ball. And we just have smaller overlap areas now for our bouncy bouncy. So, a little bit better. Could still probably work on that, make that a little better, but I think we're okay. All right, so we're gonna close that. And now we're gonna hit apply and we're gonna add a behavior. And we are going to go and we're going to add bounce. Apply. So now we're going to take this and we're going to set that here in the middle of the screen. And what we're going to do is go to events. And we're going to add, at the beginning of the scene, we're going to add a new condition. And we're going to go comment on it. Oops. Add other comment. Set ball moving. right force so what we're going to do um, oh wait no it's out of here sorry cancel so add a condition new sprite all right and we're going to go to Start. Zoom at the beginning of the scene. So that's what I want. Okay. At the beginning of the scene, add an action. New sprite. Add a force. Add an angle. And we're going to go... a uh, 35 degree shift. Speed in pixels per second, 250. Now 250 is pretty slow and I just picked 35. You can add random in here. I, th I thought it was a pull down here. Uh, I'd have to look it up. Um, but it's easy enough to do. So now we're going to see if that works. But we're also going to go up here to add a new event. And in this, we're going to go um, new sprite collision with the border. Okay. Action. Bounce. 
is our object is bounce bounce on border okay copy add new event add a condition new sprite collision object player one okay paste new sprite bounce off player one all right file save let's see if I can bring this up here to test now Almost, damn it. Come on. It's not going to let me bring it up there. Hmm. All right. So I couldn't actually test it either because the ball wasn't moving. So at the beginning of the scene, add to new sprite an instant. Force an angle of 35 degrees. So it didn't actually move it. I'm not sure why. Hmm. Let me try deleting that. Add condition, new sprite. Add a force. Ah, okay. 35 degrees, speed 250, permanent. That was what I did wrong. Preview. There it is. And it is working. So now. If I could just figure out a way to put that up onto that screen. I think what I'm going to do quickly here, just so that I can show it to you, is I'm going to add I've just set up an OBS Studio Capture here quickly. So Screen Capture 3. Mm 
should be recording this. And now if I run this, you'll see that the ball bounces off of the walls, bounces off of the paddle we made, paddle moves back and forth, And we have created a Pong game. So that's about where I'm going to wrap this up for today. It's gone on quite a long time and there were a couple of technical details that I'll need to tweak before the next one. But basically we've shown you how to recreate a bouncing ball off a paddle with a border and shown you the very basics of getting into G-Develop and using our menus, our project menu, setting up sprites, setting up actions, using our scene events and our scene designer. So from there, I'm just going to leave it and um, we'll see you in the next one.